I understand there was a very interesting conversation between a BBC journalist uh, and Elon Musk uh -huh. here recently. Yeah. Uh, and the journalist said that Twitter had a hate speech problem, but when he was challenged by Musk, couldn't name a single, a single example. And this seems to me to strike at this very problem now where people will put up a, a feelings-based, prejudice-based perspective and not worry about whether it's backed by the evidence. And on top of that, this is particularly true in journalism where I think there's more than just that going on, if I'm honest. I think what you have is journalists increasingly are now playing to the crowd of other journalists. They have stopped trying to seek the truth, to cover the issues fairly. What they're trying to do is make sure that other journalists see them having asked the right questions. Uh, and so if you're interviewing Elon Musk and you are the tech editor of the BBC, you have to be seen to challenge him because in the BBC's conception, Elon Musk is this evil right-wing billionaire who's ruined Twitter. Uh, and so you have to ask that question. Um, and the other thing is, it shows you how terrible they have become at their jobs. How, do you know, the, the worst thing about that interview isn't even what you've just raised. What happened was the guy ran out of questions ran out of questions. How do you run out of questions when you're interview, interviewing the guy who says that he wants to preserve humanity by extending it over several planets? How do you run out of questions when you're interviewing a guy who has built one of the most successful breakthrough innovative companies in the world in Tesla? How do you run out of questions when you're interviewing a guy who spent a huge fortune and overpaid in order to buy Twitter because he believes that changing the way our conversations are being had is essential to changing the, the way our society is going. How do you run out of questions? How, how is that possible? How, how, that, that, that is a dereliction of duty. You know, when we were in America just now, I was on Bill Maher's show along with Elon Musk. And Bill Maher is a seasoned interviewer. He's, he's had his show on, on HBO and elsewhere for ages. And, you know, I hope he doesn't mind sharing, me sharing this, but he was so excited about having Elon on. And he had Elon on for about 20, 25 minutes, something like that. And he was like a kid in a candy shop, as they'd say in America. How do you run out of questions? How? And it, it only means that you, you just fundamentally are not good at your job. Uh, it brings to mind something that Richard Dawkins said. He was distressed, expressed dismay at the lack of curiosity amongst young people and made the comment that it's only these pesky Christians amongst young people that seem to have any great interest in exploring ideas. Mm. Have we lost our curiosity? I think some people have. You and I still have it, I think. And the fact that people listen to your show and to mine, I think that shows that a lot of people still have it. Um, you know, look, no one can measure any of these things, really. You know, no. I, I could sit here and make a very strong argument for how our society has lost its curiosity. I can sit here and make a very good argument for why it hasn't. It's, it's the glass half full, half empty thing. I think for me, and we, we talked about it over lunch, actually. You know, we were talking about whether we can win this, if you like, whatever this is or not. And you said to me, and I thought about it, and I was like, I don't know. What I do know is what my purpose is and what my mission is. Um, as long as there are people who are curious, I'm going to try and feed them. Uh, and if, if, and if, if other people see that and get drawn into it, fantastic. Uh, that, that's all really we can do.